I think so. Welcome, everybody. This is a presentation of LFX tools, and it's actually um, uh, my first presentation of LFX tools, which I am really proud and really honored that you guys are here. Um, so it, for those who had the opportunity to visit our, uh, our booth uh, today, this is the very first time we presented our booth in the showroom. And if you guys had a chance to go visit it, I'm so glad you did. Um, next time, we will continue. Uh, promoting the participation, but basically what we were talking about were the LFX tools, which um, is a set of tools that the Linux Foundation is developing for helping open source communities thrive better. So um, if you go into our website, which it is lfx.linuxfoundation.org, you're going to see a series of tools here, which you can explore one by one, and uh, in each one of them has a link to the documentation and an option to explore the tool itself. So today, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, although I wish I could. But if you guys have any questions on a particular tool, uh, please let me know. So the tools that I wanted to explore today, one of them is the ECCLA. ECCLA is a, a one-of-a-kind tool where uh, we can manage both corporate and contributor license agreements. And currently, we have support to manage this once in Garrett, GitHub. And I believe GitLab support is just recently added. So that is uh, one of our tools that we are very proud to present. And let me just show you how it looks like. Uh, so if you go here in the main page, you're going to have an option to click here to view all of our tools. So if you have uh, some time, I will definitely recommend you to take a look at all the tools that we're offering today. Um, and one of them that I'm going to start with is ECCLA, which, as I was mentioned, uh, this is the, uh, the tool that we use for managing contributor license agreements and corporate, both co corporate and individual license agreements. So when you come here, you're going to uh, see three different types of access. One is for your program manager, who's going to be uh, managing everything through another tool called Project Control Center, which is basically uh, the backbone of uh, what everything gets connected into the other tools. So this access is for the project manager. Uh, we have another uh, organization access, which basically will take you to our control center for uh, uh, starting creating a CLA or creating groups. And this is mostly uh, used for our legal department and legal uh, background um, expertise, right? And we have another one, which is the developer access, which this mainly contains information for developers on uh, what do you need to do, what is a CLA, uh, what do we expect uh, for, uh, for, from you so that you can start contributing. So let me just quickly go. Uh, this is for developers access. Uh, here it takes you to a little bit of an explanation of what is a CLA, a corporate CLA or an individual CLA. And uh, what do you need to do before you start contributing to uh, the code? So that's one. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this one because the other one is a little bit more uh, elaborate. So this one is for your program manager, which takes you to the project control center. And as I was saying, the project control center is another of our LFX tools, which uh, is basically the, the backbone of all your projects. And it's where your uh, projects uh, start onboarding. So this is the first uh, place. If you want to see your project onboarded for any of these tools, this is basically the start point. And as you can see, for example, uh, let's take a look at one of them just pretty quick. Uh, you can see here one of our Academy Software Foundation uh, rep, uh, pro, uh, projects. So you can see here all the services that, you, that we have connected for them, right? And uh, one of them over here, ECCLA is one of them. You can see here the status enabled. And uh, basically what uh, I, I don't have <laughs> access to as a, as a program manager, but basically this is where uh, the, the CLA gets enabled. And uh, there's several steps that you have to do. So one of them is create the CLA group that your project is going to be uh, using. And these are going to be based on whether you want to have an individual uh, license agreement or a corporate li license agreement. So you can have either of them or you can have both of them, which 
uh, projects like, for example, ONAP, which it is one of my favorite <laughs> organizations that I work for. Uh, they have a double license agreement in, in a single group. So here, uh, you, and you also have the option of uh, either using an existing template, which I believe we have two existing uh, templates that you can use. One is Apache template and the other one, I am forgetting which is the other one template that you can also use. But you can either use one of those pre-existing templates for your CLA agreements or you can use uh, your own one. And here you enable it and it guides you to a process of, okay, now if you're putting the CLA in Garrett or in GitHub, uh, go ahead and enable the bot in, uh, in GitHub, for example, and, uh, so that next time a new contributor enters uh, and starts contributing, uh, you're going to have uh, a little pop that says, oh, is this your first time contributing? So go ahead and sign the license agreement, etc. And then your contributions are going to be able to proceed, right? Any questions so far? One is the Apache template. The custom, one. the custom, okay, okay. I thought it was like two of them and then the custom. Okay, so it's the Apache one, which is probably the one that most organizations, most yeah, most companies choose to. That's kind of the standard. Yes. But if the buyers have a custom requirement, yes. 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 Yes, correct. And it's not like a DocuSign. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and it's like a, uh, so basically what we were saying is that uh, there's uh, one uh, template that uh, most companies choose to use, which it is an Apache template, and the other one is a custom template, which companies can um, uh, customize depending on their uh, contribution, cor corporate or individual needs, right? And uh, those ones, it, it loads like a DocuSign kind of form where you can edit. So let's go now into the third option very quick. Um, so this is the Project Control Center. Let's go back into ECCLA. And the yes. 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 Correct. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that, that's basically how it works for umbrella organizations. Uh, if you create a, a, a group at an umbrella organization, everything below that umbrella is going to be an edit. But also at the uh, individual uh, project level underneath an umbrella, you can also specify your own groups that are going to be also uh, adapted to that particular project in particular. So it all depends on how the organizations and the umbrella uh, wants to manage their CLAs. Thank you for that. <laughs> and the third access here is for the CLA manager. This is uh, mostly anybody that is going to be acting as the legal uh, uh, legal background for your uh, for your organization, and it takes them to a corporate CLA console where uh, you can have a little bit more detail on what's happening on your on your project. So, for example, if we go here to the ASWF uh, uh, umbrella, we're going to see uh, here all the active CLAs for that particular umbrella, um, uh, umbrella and all the projects that are uh, used in it right now. And also, you're going to have your CLA managers in your organization, which a CLA manager uh, uh, can uh, manage, add and remove other CLA managers. But this is very important that there's always has to be at least one CLA manager um, acting here. So uh, let's see, for example, this is, this is um, a project that has, uh, I believe this one has uh, an active CLA right now. And this is how it's going to look like. 
So this is how it's going to look like. And here you have a little bit of more information of what the CLA, uh, who, who's the managers for the CLA, and also the currently uh, approved uh, developers that have signed that particular CLA. And in case of a, in case of a project that does not have a CLA, uh, you're going to be able to see a set of instructions. For example, I, I, don't, I don't believe this one has it. So here you're going to have a guide, a uh, step-by-step uh, process on how to create your CLA group, how to get that CLA group um, active uh, and onboarded in the project control center, and then from there on how to activate it in either Garrett or GitHub or GitLab, etc. So this is how uh, the three axes for ECCLA work. Any questions before we move to another tool? All right. So this is one. Another tool, uh, this is actually another tool that we've been pre presenting and showcasing a lot in the, um, in the uh, showroom booth is the LFX Insight. So LFX Insight is a collection of data for your organization and it helps you understand how your community is doing, how you, the participation of your collaborators uh, it's looking like, um, most active organizations, and in, it helps your organization make better and informed decisions on their uh, roadmap. So when you enter here, you, you get a global trend of how every, everything is looking like. So these, uh, these uh, global trends can be also customized depending on a particular time frame. So let's say, for example, one year. And you get information such as your contributor's trend, uh, growth and retention of, the, of your contributors, anything that has to be related to your actual contributions. But also it gives you information very specific down to the lines of code added, deleted, etc. And uh, if you look into each one of these charts, you're going to have additional information that pops here in, the, in each one of these um, graphs. So this is actually a, a very cool feature that, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it is very attractive, in my opinion. So if you, if you have a chance to explore it, please um, go ahead. And each one of these graphs can also be uh, 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 saved in, in case you want to use them in fu future presentations, for example. So not only that, but it also contains information about your CICD um, uh, uh, health, as well as your contributor per uh, organization, which it is a little bit more here. Uh, oh wait, th this, is, this is also important. This is also your, your channel, communication channel. So how ac active is your communication between your members of your organization? This is via email or via other um, channels, like for example, Slack or uh, Rocket Chat, etc. And you have also your organization engagement so that you can see which are your most uh, uh, active organizations and last but not least uh, the registry health so how your deliverables are being received whether uh, you're having a good activity there so this is just global trends but specifically you can also look for example you can look into a, a particular uh, project in this case uh, we we've been showcasing how hyperledger looks like so again once you, once you enter here, you're going to notice uh, global trends similar to the ones that we saw earlier, but these are specific to the Hyperledger project in particular. And if in each one of these options, you're going to see, for example, your technical metrics, which it is a very detailed, uh, detailed uh, graph and detailed data on how your contributions are uh, looking like. So. Let me see, this one takes a little bit of loading. Okay, there you go. So here you can see all everything that is happening in your uh, contributions and you can always filter them by author, by organization, and by repository if you want to see um, a specific repository. So uh, here is what you will get. You, uh, you will get uh, what are the current submitters over time, for example. You will get uh, your pull request by submitters all uh, down to the specific numbers on uh, what, uh, who's contributing to which repositories and what is their current um, average time to get your changes merged. 
So you get all of that, and this, all, the, all this data can be downloaded, and this is very useful when it comes to um, uh, release managers uh, trying to organize what's going on and uh, what projects are probably needing a little bit more of help, uh, what, what repositories might need a little bit more support than others, right? So that's that. And you get also links to specific links on GitHub on your actual pull request in case you want to see more details on what those a particular uh, pull request constitutes. So uh, you can do that. Uh, part of this trends also includes anything that is happening on your uh, issues management. This could be Bugzilla, uh, Jira, in this case, uh, GitHub issues also. In this case, Hyperledger, I believe they have two GitHub issues and Jira, but it's basically data similar to your contributors' uh, data, but for specific to your issues um, that are being worked on. And you can also filter by submitter, filter by assignee, organization, project, etc. And you get a, a lot of graph data on what's going on and uh, what are your most active members and the most active projects that you're seeing here. So this is also very specific data. And uh, one of the ones that I like to look at is this one, the CICD. So I am a release manager for, well, release <laughs> engineer for um, uh, some of these organizations. And for example, this tells me a lot on how the CICD uh, pipeline looks like. So um, if this is looking like there's a lot of uh, jobs that are failing, it's probably something to consider looking at. And if you're familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with a particular name of a, a specific job, you can also filter them via a specific job that you want to look at. Uh, oops, not that one. Uh, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that we just talked about. And uh, registry Docker Hub. So this is uh, also graphs. Uh, uh, regarding how your uh, images are uh, being seen in Docker Hub, for example. And you can see what are the most uh, uh, popular images that have been downloaded by users and how many, uh, how many pools has it had, etc. So in this case, we noticed that this one in particular is very popular, right? So it's probably one, one of the main ones. So uh, that's what you get. Uh, that's what you get when it comes to the technical metrics. Um, another one that is really very interesting is this one, the social media metrics, where you can see everything that is happening in your Twitter account currently. And there is also plans to enable, hopefully, LinkedIn and, um, and uh, Facebook, I believe. Uh, yes, it all depends on the popularity of what organizations are using. but. Um, this is what's enabled currently. So it's very similar to Twitter Insights, but uh, this is going to be all in one place. So when you have more than one social media site, uh, you're going to be able to see everything in one location, which is, in my opinion, is fabulous. And um, another thing here that you get, for example, you also get the earned media, which it is basically what people are saying about you, what your, uh, uh, what your uh, share of voice are, and how you're being present uh, to other people, right? So, so this is to make sure that your, uh, what you're doing is actually reaching uh, uh, people's ears, right? And another one, another uh, insights feature is this, the community um, contributor board which tells you everything that is happening in your organization uh, that you can filter from your GitHub uh, or Jira um, participation uh, to your code or, for example, Garrett or GitHub participation, and also your Confluence participation. So this is excellent when it comes to, uh, for example, organizations like ONAP like to do the awards uh, season. So this is a perfect uh, place to start and seeing what are the contributions of your participants look like. And just uh, any questions so far? Yes? <laughs> Yes, 
yes it is uh, the this data is available publicly uh, right now uh, these everything that you see here all the contributions uh, we encourage people to um, to connect their individual dashboards which mm -hmm. it is where the data is being pulled from so just pretty quick the individual dashboard is another of our tools here where mm -hmm. you get the you get the opportunity to connect your Garrett, GitHub accounts, LinkedIn accounts, and all that information gets used for uh, building uh, your contributions, showing your contributions properly and insights. I see, I see. So, um, so in order to get to this application, it requires you to log in. Yes. Once you log in, then you're exactly. able to see the data. Yeah, you need a Linux Foundation ID. So again, when you start in uh, lfx.linuxfoundation.org, uh, the very first thing that you're going to see is the list of tools that I started uh, presenting here. Mm -hmm. And you get a little pop here, um, uh, whether you have a uh, Linux Foundation ID or not. So uh, if you don't have an LFID, uh, you get a series of steps uh, that guide you to create one. And oh. then you can access all these tools right now. Okay, okay. And if I have to modify my information, yes. then I go to individual dashboard. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And we can also, for example, if you happen to have uh, several accounts that are active in your individual dashboard, uh, we can do things like, for example, merging your accounts, etc. And the easiest way to do so, if you're here in any of these tools, you click here on Get Help and then Support. And this reaches our uh, ticketing system portal which we can help you out with anything that you want. So in this case, for example, if you have a problem with individual dashboard, um, you, can, you can click here and you can say, OK, I want to account merge request, for example. I see, I see. So these are a quick links for any support that you need. OK, so the idea here is that uh, I create an account only one time, which is the LFID. Yes. And using that, I would be able to access all the tools. Exactly. I see. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. You had another question, Vasu? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, so if you go back to the CI CD um, page that you are showing the reports metrics. This one? Or uh, the, the CI CD? CI CD, yeah. Okay, give me one second. I just think I just lost the. Okay, here it is. So we go back into insights because uh, this new opens. Oh, wait, it might have been this one. Yes, here it is. Yeah, a so, new window opens. Yeah. Uh, technical metrics. CICD. So we see the CICD, right, and the different dashboards, like for instance, the uh, build trends and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there a deep linking back to, like say if you are using CICD Jenkins as your CICD system or Circle CI, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, is there a deep linking, like the uh, trend that you are showing here to a graph where I can click and it can take me to the Jenkins and yeah. um, I can see all the jobs that are running, in progress, finished, exactly. right, uh, by date, and I can dice and slice it. Is there a deep linking? Yes, there is. So basically, for example, uh, I'm not sure he's now loading. Let me, let me go back to another example that I've been using a lot. So uh, the own app organization. Uh, we have here, for example, their, uh, their full CI CD is based on Jenkins. So if you go here in the jobs, uh, you can filter also by a selected time or by a particular job that you would like to see, for example. And if, if you have a question on a particular job, for example, this one, you can, you can add several jobs too. I mean, this filter works if you add several jobs at the same time. And it gives you a, a consolidated data for just those particular filters, right? And here at the end, you're going to get a link of the actual, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, I don't think so. It does it. <laughs> uh, it gives you here a link, but I, I believe it in, in, uh, in the Garrett issue, the, the um, uh, Jinka, uh, Jira issues. Those ones do give you. Um, uh, linking? Yes. Okay, exactly. Got it, I believe got it. Those, this one doesn't. Let me see. I thought it. I thought it did. To be quite honest, let me see. Oh, here it is, in this one. Here. So th this is in the overview. Okay, I was in the jobs uh, tab, but no, in the in the overview you can do that. And for example, if you want to uh, do a link into a particular job, well, this one is not found because uh, 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 this is an old. Older yep. sonar job, but basically, it should 
take you to what the actual Jenkins job is. That, that doesn't appear in particular because it's a very old, so we remove older jobs from the queue. So uh, most of these jobs should be, uh, they take you to the place where in Jenkins it's available. Got it, got it, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So last but not least in the insights tool, one of, <laughs> one of my personal favorite tools here is the compare project uh, feature which, for example, if you're working in a particular umbre umbrella, let's say, I, I, I work a lot in the uh, uh, LFN umbrella projects, and if I want to look at how uh, ONAP is doing, oh, sorry, not it. Uh, so let's search for, uh, let's add a project here. Uh, Let's add one here, and I want to compare it with another umbrella, the same umbrella, let's say, uh, Oran. Let's add another one just so that it looks a little bit more complicated. Let's say, uh, open daylight, open daylight. Let's add a third one. And this feature is really cool because um, if, if you compare yourself to the growth and the current development of other projects, you can see here side by side how the contributions are looking, but, uh, anything that is related to your contributions and your commits, uh, participating organizations, etc., down to your uh, JIRA issues. So uh, how your JIRA issues are doing and what is the participation from other organizations and companies in a particular project. So um, th this feature is actually really helpful when you want to evaluate yourself um, against other companies on the same umbrella. And the idea behind this is to, uh, for, for contributors or collaborators that participate in more than one umbrella uh, project at the same time, the idea is to have this data available and visible so that it can be taken to TSE meetings, uh, PTL meetings, and uh, uh, promote awareness on how uh, we're doing compared to other organizations. So I recommend you looking into this. And just very quick, uh, this data works best when organizations use the same tools. So for example, if you have an organization here that uses, that doesn't use Jenkins, but uses something else, let's try, I think Hyperledger uses uh, both uh, GitHub uh, I think they, they might use GitHub Actions and, and, oops, I went somewhere else, sorry. So let's try again. Let's try ONAP, for example, and let's use uh, add project. Let's try Hyperledger. Hyperledger. So in this case, the information will still be appearing here, but you're gonna see that it's a little bit, uh, 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 sideways because uh, in this case uh, Hyperledger uses GitHub issues for example or uses uh, GitHub for their collaborations whether it's um, ONAP is based 100% in uh, Garrett and Jira. So you're still gonna have some way of kind of comparing the information but just not side by side. So this tool works best when the similar collaborations tools are, and CICD tools are used across the organizations. Any questions? All right, so last but not least, I hope I still got your attention. <laughs> so let's uh, go into the security tool. So here, here the security tool is uh, powered by both sneaks and blue brackets. And so uh, here you get the best, uh, uh, is the best place to see how your vulnerabilities um, are doing, whether uh, your scores are up to par to what we need to, set as a goal, et cetera. So uh, when you come here, you enter the dashboard. When here you get a little bit of uh, general overview information of what are the most, uh, for example, the 10 top uh, projects that are actively fixing vulnerabilities or like the repositories uh, that have been scanned, uh, going through scans uh, the most regularly. So this is like a, a, a cool facts kind of thing. But over here, you can get uh, information, a card information for each one of the uh, projects that are being participating. Uh, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at Edgex Foundry, for example. 
So this is when you're gonna when you're searching for a particular project. This is your home page, and here you get a little bit of an overview on how uh, your code secrets are being uh, exposed, for example, and your recent alerts. Here you get a little bit of a visual graph or how your non-inclusive language uh, it's been detected, uh, vulnerabilities as of today. And I believe these scans happen, for this particular project, they happen uh, every twice a week or so. So this, this is as recent as probably three days ago. And uh, you get a little bit more information over here on the criticality of your issues. So you start here, but you also have the option of going individually into vulnerability, uh, vulnerabilities per uh, repository. So here you get a little bit of information of what are your critical vulnerabilities uh, per project, so per, per repository. So for example, if you go into one of them and click here on view details, you're gonna see that individual uh, CVs uh, that are being detected here and their severity, right? and whether there's a fix detected or there's not a fix detected. So for example, you can, you can also filter this depending on uh, which you wanna see first. So for example, let's take a look at one that is fixable. This one. So this, this particular uh, vulnerability. You click here, you expand a little bit more of information and it tells you when it was introduced, uh, when uh, how you can fix it, and uh, here you can do a remediation plan. So, for example, you can upgrade this version to, to this version of higher, and you'll be good. So, uh, here you can you can you can take action on these vulnerabilities. So, you also have another tab, which is your dependency tree. So this is how uh, your project dependency looks like, and I believe this is all also transitive dependencies included. So yes, this this you have all a visual representation of all your dependencies. You also have your licenses. Here you have all your license information, uh, code secrets, which uh, it tells you what's going on, whether. Uh, these uh, are probably test code secrets that were left uh, behind by accident or uh, real issues sometimes. So sometimes if we forgot a little test that was uh, included there and probably we will want to make sure we address it in, in case it's something problematic later on. So this uh, takes a little bit of load. I've been having a little bit of problems with the Wi-Fi, but it, it, it will load a similar um, a representation in a specific places where the, a particular code secret was found. And let me move to this one in the meantime. This is also your non-inclusive language. So here is a, a list of all the words that get detected uh, by a blue bracket. And this list can also be modified whether you want to, um, uh, for example, master. We know that everybody has a master branch and you say, okay, I want to um, uh, ignore that. So you can always submit a request to add or remove words that you would like your uh, blue bracket to detect. And uh, this one also loads a little bit, in a little bit. But yeah, this is, this is how uh, everything looks like on the security dashboard. Um, is there any questions? Yes? Yes. So if you go to vulnerabilities tab, right? To where? Vulnerabilities tab, second tab. So on this list, uh, if you expand the details yeah. of one of them. Any of them? Any of them. So you see um, there are two entries, right? One is not fixable, one uh -huh. is fixable. Correct. Um, what do they mean? So for example, fixable is definitely, there's been a solution being uh, found that you can do like, for example, uh, uh, upgrade to a particular version or higher. 
and this uh, this is something that has been already reported and uh, it's been known to fix a particular issue. When you see something here non-fixable, it's either because a particular version is known to be not supported anymore, so there's not much you can do uh, on that regards, or a particular version gets deprecated and uh, you have to just uh, look for a workaround for that particular problem, or uh, I have found uh, cases here where it says non-fixable, but there's still a remediation. So that means that the fix has been found, but it hasn't been reported as found, but it is available. So most likely if you do a newer scan, this is a little bit of uh, three days old, I believe. So if you do another scan, uh, it might appear already, uh, uh, it might appear now as fixed since uh, a, fi a remediation was provided. So I think if I understand it right, like um, so fixable means uh, there is a remedy that is available. Correct. Uh, so we know that um, we know uh, the the version of the library that is that is being used in the code. Exactly. And we take that version, check it against the CVE CW database to see if there is a higher version available. Correct. If it does, then we make a recommendation that if you upgrade to that version, um, the issue will go away. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't find any higher version of that particular library, we say it's not fixable because yes. we don't know yet. So nothing is available, so there is no recommendation is made. That is correct. Is that right? Yes. Okay, got it. Got yes, it. and um, also I forgot to say, but there's two types of accesses to this uh, security board. So it, it didn't prompt me any questions on which access I wanted because I was using it uh, previously, but if you're new to this dashboard and you enter for the first time, it will ask you to whether do do um, contributor access or a community access. And the community access, when you enter, this is available, but it appears as mostly, all the reports appear as mostly read-only. But if you uh, verify yourself as a contributor, it asks you a few verify steps where you have to verify your GitHub account, your Garrett account, and it's just a quick verify that you have to do in order to be able to actually uh, resolve any of these issues and take action on these issues. Right. So um, on the fixable, mm -hmm. um, so right now we do provide the recommendation is either fixable or not fixable. For yes. the fixable ones, um, there is no, right now I think there is no call to action or a feature that is available where you can actually click to go to uh, um, issue a PR to upgrade that library, right? Correct. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, so I have another question yeah. on that uh, uh, code secrets. If you go up. Absolutely. Let me see if it loads. <laughs> uh, code secrets. Code secrets. So, so this is this a general side, representation. Like, um, on this, uh, uh, so like say if you found an offensive word, right? Um, I know. Oh, you want the, the uh, inclusive language or? Uh, inclusive language. That's yeah. right. Sorry. Yeah. Right. So if you found a offensive language, right, um, and you we have a way to configure mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, keywords to be excluded, for instance, yes. right. So that's the master list. Like say if you found something, right, exactly. uh, that is uh, against the list of excluded to be excluded word uh -huh. um, that is found in the code. Is there any way that we can issue a PR again to go fix it? at the project level? Yes, yes, you can You can do that. And uh, also, if you notice that a particular word wasn't flagged by blue bracket, uh, you can create a, a help a ticket and it will, it, it, in order for you to add that particular word, keyword into the list or remove a particular li uh, keyword in a list. So your Got program it. So, manager. So it is more like a, a manage it through the ticketing system. Yes. Uh, so you cannot fix it from the tool. Uh, yes. Right? I, I think that's what I uh, understood, right? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's true, actually. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it okay. is. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yes, I mean, this is um, what we have to present three of our most powerful tools. Uh, of course, we have other very powerful tools like the individual dashboard, which I really recommend you to look at. It takes probably 10 minutes uh, to have your contributions linked, everything. We have also other very important tools that in another occasion, I will be happy to 
to explore with you. So we have a mentorship tool for uh, people that want to join a program and learn a new skill or people that uh, want to uh, give up a presentation and a, a, a training course to more interested people, right? So we have a crowdfunding tool where you can uh, host a funding event for uh, your organization, for example, or f uh, fund um, uh, uh, raise, uh, raise funds right, for your cause. Uh, and we also have other tools like the organization dashboard, which you can see uh, everything that is happening at your organization level. And of course, the Project Control Center, which is basically the backbone for many of these tools and how do they connect it to bring you uh, all this information. And as a last uh, step, uh, let me remind you that here, if you go to get help, you can get a support link for our ticketing system for the Linux Foundation. And you can also get access to, to the documentation. So for example, depending on the tool that you're uh, seeing right now, I was, I was in the security tool, and you click on the uh, docs, you're gonna get directed to the um, documentation for that particular tool. And last but not least, I want to tell you about the community forum. So in the community forum, it looks like this. And this is uh, a lot of information on what's happening right now. So as you can see, <laughs> we, we announced the winners of our raffle that happened yesterday. So uh, if you want to check it out, it's kind of fun just to look around and see what's going on. So here, <laughs> a little bit of an example. But also you can, you can post any suggestions that, or anything that you like about our tools, anything that you think could be improved. Uh, we accept uh, any kind of comments. And last but not least here, uh, this is a link to our YouTube videos, which it's uh, guided tutorials for each one of these tools. So it's a, a short uh, sessions, like five minutes each uh, on how to do specific tasks in each one of our uh, LF tools. So any questions? Okay, I think that's all the time that we Thank have you. for today. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, you guys can talk out there. Thank yeah. you so much Thank for Thank you. Speaking. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I want to give you my business card in case you want to reach out.